Hello everyone, Darkside Phil here, and welcome to a special video. This is a unboxing video. I haven't done one of these in a long time. For the Hori Real Arcade Pro 4 Kai joystick. This joystick is compatible with both the PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation 4 gaming consoles. And kind of a weird story behind this one. So I used to be a major Street Fighter player. Like I used to be into it like crazy. When Street Fighter 4 was released, I played the living hell out of it. There was at one point in my life when I owned like seven joysticks at once, no lie, like various versions of Hori sticks and Mad Cat sticks and all of that. The past few years, I pretty much fell kind of out of love with Street Fighter. Maybe it was because it was there were so many versions of Street Fighter 4 and I just was tired of playing them or whatever. And it, quite honestly, there wasn't, hasn't been a lot going on majorly with fighting games in a while. And this year I actually decided for a game that came out earlier this year, Mortal Kombat 10, I was going to use the gamepad to play it for the first time I ever played a major fighter on a gamepad. But then with the announcement of the Street Fighter V beta that was coming out and Street Fighter V coming out later this year, I said, you know what, I am actually going to you know, try to somewhat get myself back into the groove of fighting games. Of course, you know, this is a new console era. We've had the, the new consoles, Xbox One and, and PlayStation 3, for almost two years now. And there really, quite honestly, hasn't been like a definitive solution for fighting game enthusiasts. What is the definitive fighting game joystick? We don't know yet. All these sticks are now starting to come out two years after the fact these consoles coming out. And it was funny because the other day I was at a local electronics store that uh, is actually local to the West Coast. It's called Fry's. And that doesn't exist in a lot of the United States, only pretty much on the West Coast. And I was in the store, and I saw this joystick. And I said, what the hell is this? Like, I didn't even know this existed. Now, I've owned the Hori Real Arcade Pro 1, 2, and 3 joysticks. So I've played the different iterations and versions of this stick on PlayStation 1 and 2 and 3. And I even had a converter that allowed it to be used on Dreamcast as well. So I've played with Hori joysticks for the greater part of a decade, if not longer. Okay. So, today, I, you know, or that day I was in Fry's, I see this, I'm like, this actually exists, and it is a native to PS4 joystick, although it will work with PlayStation 3 as well. Okay. It has the standard Hori layout of your six buttons, but apparently it has some interesting bells and whistles the fact that it's actually made supposedly with, with tournament level components rather than just kind of standard mass produced stuff and I'm kind of interested to see it also supposedly has some nice features with buttons and stuff on the side so we're going to check it out so just before I open it to let you know it retails for $149.99 yes $150 bucks. it's an expensive joystick by no means is this you know Wow, you can run out to the store and buy this every day. This is an investment for me because I know with games like Street Fighter V coming out, I'm going to need a joystick to play on. So, it is pricey. Good luck finding it any cheaper because I did research online and no one sells it cheaper. It's only $149 everywhere. So, you pretty much got to bite the bullet if you want to check it out. Okay? Alright, so, we're going to unbox this. Let's see exactly what it looks like as we take it out of the box. Just like all these Sony insignias, you know, the like the, almost like the PlayStation 4 dashboard on the top there. So here it is. If you're wondering what that humming sound is, that's my PC behind the camera, so yeah, you're gonna hear that. This is in my office. So we got your packing on the sides here, we'll take that off. Some styrofoam around it. Okay. Remove the tape. Wow, so this is quite interesting. The reason I say that right off the bat, before I even take a look at the stick itself, look at the bottom of the stick. Now this is pretty unique. It's got foam under the stick. And that's probably for two reasons. Number one, because if you're playing on a flat surface, these joysticks have a tendency to slide around. Now, the previous Hori sticks that I owned actually had foam pads in the corners. In fact, you can even see there's actually spots on this stick that looks like they were designed for foam pads, but they actually went and put giant pads on the bottom. Number two, if you're playing on your lap, 
and it's sitting on your lap, yeah, those oh, pads will also help you to not have it skid around your legs. So that's kind of cool. That's the first joystick I've ever seen that has like full foam pads on the bottom of it. Pretty interesting. Um, so let's take a look at it. As you can see, it's a typical layout for a joystick. You've got your six primary combat buttons. You've got two extra buttons. So for games such as Mortal Kombat, where you need a block button or you need to hold multiple buttons to do you know big inputs, you still have the eight button layout. And a lot of people say, gee, isn't it better to have just six instead of eight? Well, yes and no. In most fighting games, you can disable these anyway. So it's really not that big of a deal. So this is your options button, which is typically basically your start button on the PlayStation 4. And they have a placement here. I'm interested to see if there's a way to disable it, and I think there is. I'm taking a look on the side here. Hmm. I'm taking a look on the side of the joystick at the button to see if there's a lock for it. Because primarily, here's what happens. Normal fighting games, like let's say Street Fighter, Tekken, etc., not a big deal, because what you'll do, you'll be playing, and you'll play with these primary buttons. You can usually unassign these two, and it's not that big of a deal. But for games such as Marvel vs. Capcom, right, you're mashing. And as you mash, you have a tendency to hit things you don't mean to hit. If you hit that button and you pause the game during a tournament-level game, you have disqualified yourself. So I'm curious to see if there's a way to disable that. But anyway, I also want to look around, so let's take a look. The first thing you might say is, where the hell is the cord? Well, there's a door. Look at that. And inside the door here is your cord. So here it is. There's your <clears throat> PlayStation 4 cord inside of the do storage door. That's nice, but immediately I can tell you the door already came off, which is kind of annoying. Let me see if I can get it on here. So the door's on, and then to open it, you put your thumb here and you flip it. There you go. So, already I can tell you, that's a good idea, but at the same time, most people, that door's going to fall off. I can tell you right now, during a tournament or whatever, that's going to come right off. <laughs> but that's good. There's your USB cable. And we're gonna, I'm going to untie it. I'm going to see how long it is. This is another thing with these joysticks. Some of these game, uh, game companies don't give you a long enough cord. And uh, that could be a problem, if, especially if you're you know, in a situation where you need to go you know, a longer distance with your joystick. Let's see here. So I've got the cord out. And I would say eh, it's a decent length. It's not it's not incredibly long. Like for example, uh, when Street Fighter 4 was came out, they released a, a line of Mad Cats joysticks. And the Mad Cats joysticks had like really long cords. This certainly I don't think is as long as that. But it's also not short. I'd say it's about mid-range, so not too bad for a cord. They got a little cap on there, too. Um, so taking a look, assign mode and turbo mode, all right? First of all, there's your touchpad, and yeah, PlayStation 4, you know, has that motion touchpad. They actually installed one on this stick. I don't know if you ever will actually want to use that, but it's nice they put it on there. It's a nice touch, especially with fighting games that may want you to use the pad to do stuff. There you go. It's on there. Uh, on your side here, you've got the share button. So if you're playing the game, wow, I want to do a screenshot, you know, or a video or whatever on your PlayStation 4, your share button exists, you can press that. You've got switches here. Now, I'm trying to read them. They're very hard to see. As you can see, they're all black. One of them says uh, DPLSRS. Now, what that means, for those who don't know, is it's changing the functionality of the joystick from digital to analog and back. So DS would actually mean the, the, the D-pad of your PlayStation 4 controller. LS and RS mean left stick and right stick, which are the two thumbsticks of your PS4 controller. So let's say, for example, you're playing Street Fighter. It doesn't really matter. You can either use the digital pad or you can use the left stick input. Right stick won't work because right stick isn't used in Street Fighter. However, there may be other games that you play. Maybe it's not a fighting game and you want to use your joystick on there. Then you can actually have this assigned to the right stick if you would like. I don't know why you would, but uh, there's also, it says A off and A on. I don't know what that means. It might be the assign mode. I'm actually going to take a look at the instructions in a moment and see if we can figure that out. There's also 51220, it says. Now, I don't know what the hell that means, 51220. Maybe it's turbo mode and it's the speed of the turbo. You know, 5 inputs per second, 10 inputs, 20 inputs per second. Maybe that's what it is. And then right here, there's a final switch, 43. Again, I don't know what that means. I'm going to have to check the instructions and see what that switch is. You've got your L3. 
So that would be your left thumbstick click in, which you can't do, obviously, there's no left thumbstick on here. Uh, R3, so you do, you do your right thumbstick click in too. Your PlayStation button, and then here's your turbo button to enable your turbos, okay? So there's your joystick. Now what I want to do, like I said, I want to look here and see what, what are those other functionality. What are those triggers? Let's, let's check here in the instruction manual. All right. Share button, we talked about that. Stick toggle control. Assign mode switch. Okay, I was right. So the assign mode switch. I was absolutely right with all of my assumptions. Wow. The assign mode switch uh, will allow you to, to switch that mode on and off. I've got to see if it explains what that is. Let's see. This product does not have a stereo headset or microphone input. Therefore, you must connect a USB headset to your PlayStation 4 or a Bluetooth headset. This does not work with a headset. You can't plug a headset into this. That's important to know uh, with this joystick, I guess, right? Um, let me see here. How to connect. Okay, with the 4.3 switch, what is that? PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 3. So the switch on the side that says 4.3, if you're doing it with PlayStation 4, must be toggled to 4. If you're playing on PlayStation 3, it must be toggled to 3. That's cool to know, and I didn't realize that. So it is backwards compatible with both systems, but you need to have that switch toggled. That's what the 4.3 switch was. Okay. Turbo speed, I was absolutely correct. 5 times per second, 12 times per second, or 20 times per second was that switch on the side. How fast you want your turbos input. Touchpad functionality, you know, it explains, uh, which is basically just like a touchpad. Um, ah, here we go. Assign mode. You can remap up to three buttons to L1, L2, and the option button, or you can uh, disable the functionality of those buttons. Aha! Remember I had said that when you're in a tournament, right, you usually only use six buttons. And so these two and this can actually be disabled according to this by using the, uh, your, your switches here. Yeah, it's called assign mode. Set assign mode switch to on, and then press the button to be remapped. Select between the L1, L2, or options buttons. Your turbo indicator will begin to flash. How to turn off button functionality on a selected button. Press and hold the turbo button for three seconds after performing step two. So what you would do is you would flip on this assign, hold down the button, right? Then after this starts blinking, then you hold down the turbo button and it'll disable the button completely. So you can disable L1, L2, and options if you want. That's great in tournaments. That's absolutely essential actually in tournaments because if you can't do that and you accidentally pause the game during a tournament, you screw up. So, initial impressions of the joystick. I haven't played with it yet, obviously. I can tell you this, the buttons seem very responsive. They seem like they have a, like a very little distance to push in to get them to actually to respond. The joystick seems pretty good. It seems like a combination of the old style uh, joysticks that they used to have and one that they had actually is, is called a Samitsu stick. It seems like a unique combination of both. So I'm going to actually try this joystick out today in, in Street Fighter 4 and also in um, Mortal Kombat 10 to see what I think about it. But initially, for $150, you're getting a lot. You're getting you know full button functionality, you're getting tournament level components, you're getting a storage compartment for your cord, and it does have a built-in touchpad, which is nice. You're getting turbo functionality, you're getting the ability to de re or, or unassign or completely turn off these buttons so you don't screw yourself up in a tournament. Uh, you've got all your P Pl standard PlayStation 4 buttons that you would expect, right? Including, you know, your, your PlayStation Home button, your Share button. It's nice that that's on there. And then the thing that I like is the foam on the bottom. That is going to help you not only have the joystick not slip, but also sit on your lap securely during a tournament. I really did not like, in a previous generation of joysticks, here they would put those four little foam pads and pretend like they did something. Those pads would typically fall off within a, a couple months of use. The glue would wear out, they would fall off. This feels durable, and it feels like uh, it's going to be a better component, you know, than, than what was on those previous joysticks. So, $150 for the Hori Real Arcade Pro joystick. What the hell? I just hit something. Uh, $150 for that joystick. And uh, it's, your, it's up to your ultimate judgment whether you think that joystick is worth it or not. 
I'm going to test it today, but that is the full unboxing. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I will see you later.